Welcome to the Know Nothing Show with Alan Elkins and Rich Friedman, who've been in the legal profession for over 30 years and now want to share their experience and knowledge with you. Hey, maybe they do know a little something. You can join Alan and Rich by calling in toll-free 1-800-889-0267 or watch them on ElkinsandFriedman.com on Friday nights. Now your hosts for the next hour, Alan Elkins and Rich Friedman. Hey now, everybody. It's Friday night. Uh, December 20th. December 20th, and uh, Merry Christmas, and I just want to tell the folks at home that uh, this is our annual Christmas show tonight. Yes, it is our annual Christmas show, and I like to refer to it as our Christmas craptacular event tonight. That's right. I can't wait to get started. So what do you have for us first? Uh, Well, just calm down a little bit. Let me say for those (laughs) that would like to take a look at us, see what we look like, and Mr. Friedman's wearing a Santa hat. He put his, uh, you know, I, I thought you'd really wear a Grinch hat, but I guess they don't make Grinch hats. I, I couldn't find it. I was looking for it all day. That's why I got here so late tonight, because I was looking right? for the Grinch hat. No, oh, he's wearing a, a Santa hat. And uh, actually, we'll be talking about, about Santa Claus later. We'll be talking about the origin of Santa, whether right. Santa is, uh, is a uh, white man, a, a black man, or something in between. How, he may how even, old? How old is that hat? How old is that hat? Um, Probably as old as Mr. Freeman. I hate to I say it's about 90? Uh, about 40 years old. It's it's a lovely hat. But those wishing to see us can go on Elkins and Friedman.com, E-L-K-I-N-S and A-N-D, Friedman.com. And we're here uh, tonight as always. We're uh, begging for your phone calls. Uh, local number is 561-844-6167. Or you can reach us at one 800 Eight eight nine zero two six seven. That's and, correct. And of course, we're on WBZT. Now, let me ask you, Mr. Freeman. I hope we're, you, on WB, we're in the right place, right? WBZT. Okay, I want to make sure I didn't get off at the wrong exit. No, okay, you good. didn't. Good. Now, let me ask you: You have any Christmas plans of any sort? Christmas plans. I, have a, I was invited to a Christmas party tonight after the show. Is that true? Yeah. Well, like where? <laughs> <laughs> in my having... building, in my in my apartment building. Is that true? That's right. They invited me to a party. You and the security guard? <laughs> security guard and the manager and um, the really, That's yeah. true. They're really having all a the party residents. at your building. Yeah, they're having a party. Is there any kind of gift exchange? Because if <laughs> if I uh, know if there is one, I know you're not going to be there. Uh, that's why I'm coming late. I know. Uh, you know, when I think back, uh, we used to at one time have pretty decent parties for our, our law firm, but. But that's where we had pretty good secretaries that worked there. <laughs> oh, it's a cheap shot, Richard, but I doubt they're listening. But the truth is, yeah, we did. We used to have some pretty nice uh, affairs. We used to go to some nice restaurants. That's right. And each... uh, everybody had a real good time. Sometimes yeah. the secretaries got a little tipsy, drank a little too much. Yeah, they but... did. I know. You, you so guys saw a Christmas party? What? We, we did. Party? This year, though, we were kind of on the cheap side. I almost feel bad, truth be known. We went Are you to... serious? Yeah, well, well, no. We went to a restaurant. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, but you know, supersizing it didn't really make up for it. In the past, we've gone to, like, Anthony's Runway 84. You know, we've gone to... The past some... when? A year ago? No, that years, was about eight years, years ago. ago. It was a long time ago. His hat, 40 years ago? Yeah, 40 years. Yeah, 40. That's right. But hey, don't make fun of this hat. All right, <laughs> listen, enough hat talk. I'm ready to move on here. The, uh, the first thing, you know, before we get into all of our, our Santa uh, facts, I bet you don't even know this, Richard. You know, uh, in accordance with our, our segment of Judge Behaving Badly, I honestly didn't think that we had a story until this morning. This morning. A new judge or an old judge? Opened up the Sun Sentinel. And you're probably unaware of this. And you were at the Broward County Courthouse today, right? That's right. Okay, there's a judge. We don't know her because she's in the uh, she's in the uh, drug court. In fact, she heads up the drug court. This judge's name is Giselle Pollock. And for those of you uh, looking uh, at our website, you can see her, her picture. Okay, uh, Giselle uh, allegedly. In fact, I think it's more than allegedly. What? I think that she came to court either drunk or high. When when was this? This was Tuesday. Tuesday. And I'm going to read you the, this article. Well, I'm not going to read you. I was told don't read an article, but the heck with that. <laughs> Here it is. She showed up for work. A docket full of people. Said yes. over 100 people in her, in her courtroom. Yeah. And it said that she acted exceptionally erratically at work on Tuesday. And it said in the past she's been very open uh, about battling alcoholism. Now, I don't know this judge. Have you ever heard of her? No. Giselle Pollock? Because, you know, we don't. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but we don't do too much criminal work in our office. That's correct. We don't. We don't know a thing about it (laughs) Uh, with our know-nothing theme. 
But the truth is, apparently she's talked about it before. She says she was on, it says she was on the bench for an hour and a half before abruptly attending the day session. Well, you know, a lot of times these sessions go for a oh, yeah. go couple all of hours. So abruptly canceled court. And then it says she was later seen by a fellow judge screaming and yelling at her judicial assistant. He's screaming and yelling. So this was in their Christmas party they were having. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. So let me get this straight. So the the judge that heads up drug court drug was on court. drugs, perhaps. Yeah, per, yeah, I think it's more than perhaps because I guess she had a, a chat with the chief judge, and she now says, well, you know, the, the holiday for most judges, listen, they're on a perpetual holiday, a lot of them, but the truth is a lot of them shut down between Christmas and New right. Year's. You can't, you can't get a hearing now if you, you, if you paid for it. And she makes she makes mention of the effect that uh, that she'll be off for two weeks, and she intends she in, it says that she intends uh, to get help, and uh, she's going to seek outpatient therapy. She's where is she going to Toronto? <laughs> for, that's right, to, to party with the mayor. Uh, but it, it it says she didn't want to speak about the specifics. But and I love this quote. She says, "I have some health issues." You know, I, that's usually the standard. I have Using illegal issues. drugs as health issues? Well, listen. But they didn't come out and say that she was on drugs yet, right? They're still investigating? No, but she admits uh, as much that I, I believe she's falling out. She says, here's the exact quote so we don't get our butt sued. I am going to be in an intense outpatient program. And, uh, and the chief judge, Judge Weinstein, says uh, that she's, uh, she went off the bench for a couple of days due to personal health issues. So the, the, the truth is, listen, everybody's human, people make mistakes, but as a general rule, you know, those that had the drug and traffic court, and then they fall off the wagon, that's probably not the place to be. So I bet you anything that when she does come back, they'll probably move her over to another division outside of uh, Just drugs. like our other judge, you know, they had the DUI, soon there won't be any judges to put in the <laughs> no, criminal division. There'll have to be a sign outside. <laughs> Judge, judges want it. Please apply. Yeah. And in, in all fairness, I'm looking. You, you remember Howard Finkelstein? He's the, yep. the Broward public yep. defender. And he admits he's a longtime recovering addict. He doesn't hide it. And he says those who aren't addicts, they view alcohol, uh, an alcoholic as a person lacking willpower when, in fact, it's a disease. I happen to get that. I understand it. But it's just the consequences of something like this happening when you head up the drug court. Are serious because that's going to put in jeopardy all the cases that she has. That's right, and she maybe should have stepped down from that division. Uh, Probably weeks should weeks have. Ago. But what are you going to do? So that's our, our first story of the uh, of, of the evening. So that's a very Merry Christmas story. <laughs> that's right. You get any more? Uh, well, Judge, good you ones deserve like that? some coal in your stocking. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. What I should have say, not a fifth of scotch. All right. All right. The next story that I have, I didn't hear this anywhere. Again, I open up the uh, paper today. Yeah. And, and, and I see uh, that Al Goldstein died. Now, for those that Al are, are listening, on, you remember who how, Al Goldstein is? No. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, but you're how probably, old? Actually, truth be known, there are probably, you know, 10,000 Al Goldsteins in South Florida. <laughs> right. There's, half of them live in Century Village. <laughs> That's right. But the Al Goldstein that I'm talking about is the Al Goldstein made famous by Screw Magazine. That's right. How old was he? Uh, he was actually 77 years old. Wow. And for those of you that... You know, I guess that are old enough to remember back before there was Larry Flint, known, you know, who was pretty well known by everybody. When you think pornographer, you think of Larry Flint. But before Larry Flint, there was actually Al Goldstein. And it, and I actually knew that he lived in South Florida. You know, he's a native, you know, I guess a native New Yorker, grew up there, started yeah. his screw magazine. And at one time, it says he was selling more than a, a half a million uh, copies. I think it was actually a weekly magazine. Wow. Uh, Very impressive. But, the, the you know, are we up on our first break yet, Lynn? And I should we're say, okay. we're here tonight with uh, with our usual cast of uh, characters, uh, Freddie, our producer, Linda, assistant producer, Lynn, the board op. And, uh, Don't and forget tonight, Freddie Jr. Freddie Jr. is here tonight. Uh, and unlike Freddie Sr., he actually can spell. <laughs> uh, that'll be... All right. So yeah. Anyway, let's go to our first break. We'll okay. come back. We'll talk about it. We'll be right back. Alpha. Don't go away. we got more to come. 
Life is so overwhelming right now, isn't it? Emotional and financial challenges too much? More debt than you can possibly handle? Are you facing divorce or another family law problem? Injured and don't know where to turn? There is a source of solid, affordable legal guidance. At Elkins and Friedman, an experienced lawyer will explain options and treat you with respect and dignity. They help people throughout Central and South Florida solve those problems. This is a law firm you can trust, where they actually pick up the phone when you call. They have a 30-year record of positive results and they make legal costs manageable for people from all walks of life make the call 954-372-2630 when you visit you might even meet tiffany the office mascot elkins and friedman take the intimidation and the worry out of getting the legal help you really need call 954-372-2630 and begin to make sense of your life offices in fort lauderdale boynton beach and palm beach gardens non-lawyer spokesperson Are you dreaming about your next home improvement project? Let the experienced Carbono craftsmen help make your dream home a reality. Call them at 954-984-9393 and let them help you redo the things in your home that make it special. At Carbono, they specialize in residential door and window design, repairs, and screens. They carry the top brands you know and trust. BHI, Galaxy, Windor, and ES. They'd be happy to create a signature look for your home. Call Carbono at 954-984-9393 and let Let them know you heard about them on the Elkins and Friedman Know Nothing Show. And you'll get a special 10% discount just for mentioning their name. 954-984-9393 is the number for Carbono Home Repair. And the sooner you call them and have the home team at your doorstep, the faster that'll make your dream house a reality. Call today or visit their website at CarbonoHomeRepair.com. That's 954-984-9393. Schedule a free estimate today. 954-984-9393. Please welcome a new sponsor to the show. It's Amp2 TV, the first and only internet network that's truly plugged in. When you're looking for a full-service internet television production company, discover Amp2 TV, a full-service production company that can provide all streaming videos in studio or remotely. They offer web page development, and they use all the latest platforms to help make your business selling points more powerful. They can do remotes and live streaming, as well as tape productions. Let Amp2 TV handle all of your television production needs. Choose from a variety of creative TV and radio packages and see why Amp2 TV works with many major companies, including Comcast, Bravo, and Fox 29, as well as individuals and businesses of all types and sizes. To see samples of their work or to find out more, visit their website at amp2.tv. That's A-M-P, the number two, dot TV. Or call them at 1-866-224-5422. That's 866-224-5422. This is the Know Nothing Show with practicing attorneys Alan Elkins and Rich Friedman. Elkins and Friedman have been helping folks throughout Florida for more than 30 years, and they're here now to share their knowledge and experiences with you. Stand by for more information and fun. And we're back. Right right before the. uh, Yeah, feel free to talk (laughs) over me, Richard. Not a problem. (laughs) Listen, before the break, we started talking about Al Goldstein, who was a uh, actually a founder and pornography pioneer, if there's such a thing. And uh, I I found a few more facts about him. Born in Brooklyn, 1936, he brought porn uh, pornography into the mainstream, helped shape a form of sexual satire. Now, here's the thing: at I guess the height of his fame, when he was making a, a ton of money. He had a, uh, a home on the intercoastal here, 6,100-square-foot Mediterranean uh, home on the intercoastal waterway. And at that time, it's kind of interesting. Remember one of our early shows, we said that there was a statute some guy erected to uh, get back at his ex-wife, which was essentially uh, him giving the finger? Right. Well, Al Goldstein, apparently there was such a, uh, a figure on the TV show Spin City, mm-hmm. which he bought as a prop right. and placed out there so any boats going by would essentially get the uh, finger. Mm-hmm. In fact, this guy was so outrageous also at one time, and I don't remember this, he ran for sheriff of Broward County against Nick Navarro. He ran for you sheriff? He ran for sheriff. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if he won? Oh. Wow. So here's, you talk about how far, how bad things can go for somebody, and, and this is why I, I bring it up. Not only was he estranged from his family, so I read he had a son that went to Harvard Law School, right. wasn't invited to the graduation. You know, uh, and oh, when who didn't invite him? His son didn't invite son him. Didn't to the invite him. Wasn't invited. Oh my God! So he fell as low as you could uh, get, and it said that his magazine folded in 2003. 
things got so bad that he, he lost the property in uh, Pompano Beach. He lost his Manhattan residence that he had had. And uh, believe it or not, at the time of his death, this is just mind-boggling to me, uh, he, he ended up sleeping in a borrowed car behind a Boston Market restaurant in Pompano Beach and at a homeless shelter. So this guy, one time, at the, at the top, you know, of... He's probably top very, of very Spain. wealthy. He's probably worth millions of dollars. Yeah, worth millions of dollars, there's no question. In fact, it said the, uh, the highlight for him, I guess, at one time, they got a hold of uh, a pictures of the late uh, uh, Jacqueline Kennedy, and that issue was his top-selling issue. It said here, 1973, printed photos of the First Lady, uh, which ignited a fury among her well, supporters. What were the pictures? Naked pictures. Naked pictures of yeah, the, first, of the lady. first lady. Wow. So he, there you go. So listen, a lot of people say the heck with him, but uh, I, I guess to a degree, this is a First Amendment story. I guess he did speak out uh, on behalf of the First Amendment, but he was, yeah, you were a sleazebag. I mean, look, so. think about it. Without him, look, where would where would we be right now? Yeah, I know. All right. <laughs> well, that's it. No more Al Goldstein. All right. Okay, no now, porn. No hey, porn. No porn. Oh, well, there's poor still Alan. Plenty of poor porn. Alan. Yeah, the truth is, I'll miss you. Look, he would have been driven out of business by the uh, the, the internet. internet anyway. Yeah, he couldn't yeah. keep up with the technology. No, no more. That's right. Who buys the uh, pictures? Mm-hmm. All right, the next uh, story to go over, I, I call this the uh, Scumbag of the Week Award, and it's going to go <laughs> yeah, to a gentleman. To? Okay, Scumbag of the Week's name is Axel, A-X-E-L, Instranova. And we should be putting his picture up on the, uh, on the screen right now. So what did this guy do? What did this guy do? Okay. Driving his car, okay, uh, and he ran into a bicyclist, okay. And here, let me let me tell you where it says he was driving north, his car. Okay, the, the bicyclist is northbound on his bike when he was struck from behind. The uh, and what happened? The bike actually rolled on top of uh, and over the windshield and became wedged between the rear windshield and the spoiler. So get the visual there. I'm trying to. You rear end the bicyclist. The bike goes up on the hood of your car, right. goes over the car, gets wedged between the, the back windshield and the spoiler of the car. Okay, so what does he do? What he does he do? He keeps going. This guy keeps driving. He went He went two miles. Well, he didn't want to slow up traffic, so he kept moving. Kept moving. All right. Was he so wearing he, a Santa hat? T- no, I mean, that's no. the key. If you wear this hat, you can go anywhere. All right. Listen, we, we, we shouldn't jest about this. But the truth of the matter is, he continued going for two miles with this guy clinging to life on his trunk. He eventually stops the car, and I'm not making this up, and put him in a dumpster. He left his bicyclist in a dumpster, okay, barely alive with a broken spine and a severed ear. So then what did the driver of the car do? Hold it. What did the driver of the car do? Hey, he went home and took a nap. He took a nap. He took a nap. That's what the article says. And, and the, the judge was in, incredibly incensed when this guy appeared before him as well he should have been. And it says the uh, person was taken to the hospital listed, is listed in critical condition. But I, I just, here, Broward judge, John Hurley, so here's a criminal judge, apparently doesn't drink or do anything bad, kept, yeah. kept on the bench, ordered him held on a uh, high bond, and he's still in jail. So I, I, I just can't so imagine So now he can sleep plenty. He's in so jail. So heinous. Yeah, he'll be charged with a, uh, I don't know, attempted uh, voluntary manslaughter. So leaving the scene, it's just... What was his defense? Horrible. He's a moron. Oh, that's not a well-recognized <laughs> no, I mean, defense. maybe... He, he was in a restaurant guy... home and take a nap. You know, that was his defense problem. He's just an idiot. I don't so know now he'll be playing, taking plenty of naps in jail for the next six months. Yeah, he should. Yeah, he should. And maybe somebody will, I don't know, do something to his rear end. <laughs> All right. How about a Christmas story now? Since right, we're this is our Christmas there, we're special, there. you know. Actually, okay, Richard, your your wish is granted, my friend. Oh, thank you. Now thank we're gonna you. we're gonna start the Christmasly portion of our show. Oh, great. As ho, you ho, know, ho. <laughs> that's right. Well, no hoes here tonight, though. <laughs> but we're working on getting a. We couple, are right? working on okay. one for next week. I mean, though. for the show. I mean, that's for what the I show. Meant. Okay, for the show. Uh, Just in case your wife is watching. You, okay, you know, you know how I love doing the animal of the week. Every I week. love that part. That's my I favorite. I look forward segment. to that. Thank you. Okay. All right. The animal of the week. What do you think the animal of the week should be during Christmas? It's got to be a reindeer. Very good, Richard. Hey, they All don't right. call me Rudolph for nothing. That's right. So we're going to talk about the reindeer. Okay? Yes. The origins of the reindeer. Now, 
Whoop, there, there's there's well, origins for reindeer? Right there. there are origins. First of all, do you know what, what, what a reindeer is called in North America? And can anybody in the room tell me what the oh, reindeer is called? So North they're not America? called reindeers in North America. And Lynn, you feel free to jump in too. Does anybody know? Reindeer. Where Nobody they come from? No, what are they well, called? They're not called they reindeer from. in the United from, States. Right. Yeah, they have a name and what they're called nor- typically in the United States. You don't go to the national park and say, oh, look at that reindeer. You say, look at that. Go ahead, tell us. What, buck? Give up. Uh, buck. It's a caribou. That's Where right, the caribou? caribou. That was on the tip hey. of my tongue. So it's called Lynn the knew ca- the answer. Huh? She knew the answer. She, she knew know the, the answer. answer. You guys don't get anybody right, bring the bell. She knew the answer. Uh, bring the bell. Did, did you mouth the answer? You're on she your said. best. Did she Terrible. say? Yeah, carib- it's okay, yeah. All right, That's good That's pretty you. good. Yeah. You finally got one right. All right. All right, <laughs> since a caribou is a North American species of deer, which is a native to the Arctic and subarctic uh, regions. So uh, it says, uh, and I, I'm sorry, Freddie, I'm going to read it. It says the uh, Santa Claus's reindeer form an imaginary team of flying reindeer tr- uh, traditionally held to pull the sleigh of Santa Claus and deliver Christmas gifts. Oh, and I have a question for you. How many of the reindeer, Santa's reindeer, can you name? Richard, that was my question. That's was? what I was going to ask the audience. Now, now, we've been partners so long, we've like see. two bodies in one mind. Uh, last week, our, our uh, listening audience uh, couldn't name a single James Bond. Let's <laughs> no. see this week if they are smart no enough. No Rudolph, though. Take that oh, off the yeah. list. Okay, Rudolph's off the table. Okay, because everybody knows oh, wait, Rudolph. I'm going to repeat the number. It's 561-844-6167 or 1-800-889-6167. O two six seven, got that everybody one eight hundred eight eight nine O two six seven. So here is the question. Now we're gonna wait just a, a moment or two to see if anybody is interested enough to call. And the question is, how many reindeer can you name? Well, how many were there all together? Good question, Richard. Thank you, okay. Alan. <laughs> Typically, you think of, and, and I'm gonna get into this. The uh, the. Uh, Originally, there were eight reindeer before what happened? Did before you retire? Rudolph. You moved I'm to gonna, Florida? What happened? Uh, actually, he did retire to Florida, Richard. That was actually funny. I'll give you one of those. <laughs> Thanks. All right. I, I give I'd up rather on have a the dinner, audience. but I'll take the bell. Okay. All right. So we are now going around the room. Okay. We're going okay. to round the room, and I am going to ask you to name a reindeer. We will first start with Freddie Sr. <laughs> oh, my God. Can you name a reindeer, Freddie Sr.? Why do you got to start with me? Because we're making right. it easy. You know what? Wait a second. Hey, uh, no help. Dancer. No help from the Dancer. peanut gallery. What? what is it? Dancer. You're right. Freddie got okay. one. Okay. Give me a bell. There I need go. a bell. Okay, okay. Freddie Jr. He's okay. next. Okay, Freddie Jr. Now, no help. No cheating here. Can Comet. you name? Comet. 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 Comet's good. Comet's a reindeer. That's two reindeers. Vixen. Vixen, you are correct. Is you it my are... turn? I want no, a chance. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want a chance. Now, Lynn, Miss Smarty Pants, you knew the other question. Give me a reindeer. Prancer. Prancer. Very good. Now, what were you reading that somewhere? She was no, Googling that. I was writing that. it down so I would know. Oh, very oh, good. Prancer. All right, Mr. Freeman, it's getting tougher okay, now. Okay, Blitzen. It is Blitzen. Okay. All right. It rhymes with Blitz. Now, wait a minute. Okay. If, if I'm correct, I think we have two reindeer left. Now, no cheating. Who's up next? You, Freddie? Freddie, can no, you do it? don't help him. Don't help him. No help him. <laughs> All right, Freddie Jr. No, any idea? No, oh, no I cheating. Oh, I got one. I know. Dasher? Yeah, Dasher. Oh, Dasher. All right, now, listen. You're out of the contest. Linda cheated, so no more Linda. We have one more. Okay. Actually, I, I see I two got more it. I got reindeer. it. Sleepy. <laughs> Sleepy. Sleepy. No, that was a dwarf, you idiot. All right, there, <laughs> there are two All more right. two more reindeer that we didn't mention. Two more. No, no, no. Well, not hold you. on, hold Lynn. on. I think somebody's yeah, calling in. Someone's calling oh, in. Maybe calling in. Hope hold it's on. Santa. Now know, listen, if they if they get that last reindeer, what do they win? They win, they win um, a free tour of our studios. Uh, well, somebody is calling in. I think her name is Kim. It might be my wife. Kim, are you there? Kim, if you were there, it is time to say hello. Can you hear me now? Now I hear you now. Hi, dear. I'm your little Cupid, or is that the reindeer Cupid? Yeah, you're right, dear. And just for those, you know, you're driving home from the airport. You're coming home from Amsterdam, correct? Yes, I am. All right, come on. I want the answer to this All right, question. She's driving home now, from there's Amsterdam. One, there's one more reindeer left. But, Kim, I'll see you in about an hour. I'm, I'm going to give Linda's yeah, just... I want to know why um, the Jewish Mr. Friedman's wearing a Santa hat. 
Why he's wearing a Santa hat? He's because he's a Jewish Santa Claus. I'll tell you why. Because somebody gave it to him for free. That's the correct answer. <laughs> That's 40 years ago. Free. And you're absolutely correct. 40 years run. ago, and I kept it for the special show tonight. Who knew 40 years ago I'd be on the radio? All right, now, Mrs. Elkins, I will be home in about an hour, so I will see you then, but keep listening. She doesn't have an answer? She does. She she already did it. She did Cupid. So there's one Cupid. left. Cupid. And Linda is chomping at the bit. Uh, hang up on this woman. Wow, she's juicy. Right. I know. <laughs> one more. One more reindeer. It is Donder. Donder. Jeez, I never would have guessed that Bell. Now, now listen, of all the reindeer, what kind of name is Donder? I don't know. Where does that come from? That's Dandruff in German. Da- is that right? <laughs> Well, Ooh, I okay. gotta be. <laughs> now you raise you raise a good question. Now, do you know where this notion uh, came from of, of there being either eight or nine uh, reindeer if we if we count uh, Rudolph? Did you, anybody you know from? where that came from? It must have been a, a fable or fairy tale. You close, Richard. Close. What's close? All right. There was it was a poem by a guy named Clement Seymour, and it was. Uh, are we up on our next break? Up on our next break. Yeah, let's take our next All break, right. and then we'll, we'll come back to this compelling story. Yeah, no one go away, because I want to know the answer to this question. Are you dreaming about your next home improvement project? Let the experienced Carbono craftsmen help make your dream home a reality. Call them at 954-984-9393 and let them help you redo the things in your home that make it special. At Carbono, they specialize in residential door and window design, repairs and screens. They carry the top brands you know and trust. BHI, Galaxy, Windor, and ES. They'd be happy to create a signature look for your home. Call Carbono at 954-984-9393 and let them know you heard about them on the Elkins and Friedman Know Nothing Show. And you'll get a special 10% discount just for mentioning their name. 954-984-9393 is the number for Carbono Home Repair. And the sooner you call them and have the home team at your doorstep, the faster that'll make your dream house a reality. Call today or visit their website at CarbonoHomeRepair.com. That's 954-984-9393. Schedule a free estimate today. 954-984-9393. Please welcome a new sponsor to the show. It's Amp2 TV, the first and only internet network that's truly plugged in. When you're looking for a full-service internet television production company, discover Amp2 TV, a full-service production company that can provide all streaming videos in studio or remotely. They offer web page development, and they use all the latest platforms to help make your business selling points more powerful. They can do remotes and live streaming, as well as tape productions. Let Amp2 TV handle all of your television production needs. Choose from a variety of creative TV and radio packages and see why Amp2 TV works with many major companies, including Comcast, Bravo, and Fox 29, as well as individuals and businesses of all types and sizes. To see samples of their work or to find out more, visit their website at amp2.tv. That's A-M-P, the number two, dot TV. Or call them at 1-866-224-5422. That's 866-224-5422. Life is so overwhelming right now, isn't it? Emotional and financial challenges too much? More debt than you can possibly handle? Are you facing divorce or another family law problem? Injured and don't know where to turn? There is a source of solid, affordable legal guidance. At Elkins and Friedman, an experienced lawyer will explain options and treat you with respect and dignity. They help people throughout Central and South Florida solve those problems. This is a law firm you can trust, where they actually pick up the phone when you call. They have a 30-year record of positive results and they make legal costs manageable for people from all walks of life make the call 954-372-2630 when you visit you might even meet tiffany the office mascot elkins and friedman take the intimidation and the worry out of getting the legal help you really need call 954-372-2630 and begin to make sense of your life offices in fort lauderdale boynton beach and palm beach gardens non-lawyer spokesperson This is the Elkins and Friedman Know Nothing Show. Time to get back to Alan and Rich for more. If you'd like to join in, just call in 1-800-889-0267 and become part of the show. That's 1-800-889-0267. Once again, Alan Elkins and Rich Friedman. And we're back, everybody. Now, we've successfully uh, negotiated naming all of uh, Santa's reindeer. During the break, I just read something that was really interesting, and I just happened to make a comment like, where did the name Donder come from 
Or, or for that matter, Blitzen. Who ever heard of a reindeer Blitzen? Well, where did and, Rudolph come from? Where well, did listen to this. From? Forget Rudolph's a name we kind of recognize, but listen to this. It says uh, in uh, an American anthology, 1787, uh, Edmund Stedman reprints the, 19, the 1884 Clement Clark Moore version of the poem. And, and it, I'm going to read a, a bit of the poem in a second, but it said it included the German spelling of Donder and Blitzen as opposed to the 1823 version, which used the Dutch spelling Dunder. Okay, so Donder was Dunder, right. and Blitzen was Blixem, B-L-I-X-E-M. It says both phrases translate as thunder and lightning in English. So German for thunder is now spelled Donner. Sorry to interrupt you, but you know, it's funny about German because the Christmas tree was something that came from Germany I'm also. getting there, buddy. That's going to be one of our next <laughs> stories. But how do you like that? I, I just, I find that, yeah, I did learn something. I surprised myself. Oh my God, don't spread the, the word nothing. too much that you learned something. So anybody <laughs> out there, you can now impress your friends and not only recite uh, the names of all of the uh, reindeer, but right. you know that originally Donder and Blitzen were Dunder and Blixem. Now, what made these guys famous? And you said that you thought that it was, uh, where did you say you thought it came from before I told you it was a poem? Where did it come from? Well, it's a poem. Okay. I, I, you said some other word. I don't remember what it was because I'm largely senile. I don't know. I'm getting a little senile, so I can't remember everything. But the bottom line, it's a famous poem. And we know it as not called a visit from St. Nicholas, but we know it as Twas the Night Before Christmas. Twas the Night Before Christmas. Christmas. Can, you, can you recite any of it? Twas the night before Christmas. Go ahead, Freddie Jr. <laughs> you remember something about it? Oh, no. Here she oh, comes oh, again. Oh, here, here comes the Went all through the house. And not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. Go ahead, Alan. No, <laughs> listen. Here's the relevant segment where the reindeer come in. Yes. And it, it says, when what to my wandering eye should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a minute it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, right? and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, yep. on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder, in Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they met with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the coursers they flew. I don't have no clue what that means, but that's the poem. That's the poem. 18, 1844. But it was a German poem. poem. German, uh, actually, it said Dutch. Dutch. Said Dutch, Dutch, German, pretty close. Dutch, German, one of those countries. Wow. So that, my friends, is the uh, our, our animal segment of uh, the reindeer. Now, before we went on air, I was having a discussion with our, apparently our Christmas authority, uh, Linda, uh, assistant producer, and I said, Linda, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the listening audience where Santa came from. And I think you told me you thought Santa came from... Turkey. Turkey. From Turkey. Yeah, well, I think she's got that confused with Thanksgiving. He, he but, came from Turkey? That's, the, that's the first Santa from Turkey. Well, not according to, to the research I have. It says uh, the modern figure of Santa Claus is derived from the Dutch figure of S-I-N-T-E-R-K-L-A-A-S, Sinterklaas. Sinterklaas. Which in turn has part of its basis... Entails concerning the historical figure of a Christian bishop and gift giver, St. Nicholas. So apparently there was a Christian bishop, bishop named St. Nicholas and the Dutch uh, figure of Santa, Santa Claus uh, is where the original origin came from. So I, it could be Turkey, but here, let me just uh, permit me to read just a tiny more. It says, oh. during the Christianization of the Ger Germanic Europe, this figure may have absorbed elements of the god Odin, who was associated with the Germanic pagan midwinter event of Yule, and led the wild hunt, a procession through the sky. Over time, traits of this character in British folklore, a British folklore character named Father Christmas, merged to form the modern Santa we know today. Wow, what a touching story. It is a touching story, so there you go. Again, <laughs> there I go. Here, I'm gone. <laughs> we have a we have a picture of that. Oh, do you? Do yeah, we, he uh, has a pope's hat, and he's. Uh, if you look on your phones, 
Yeah. He, he looks like a pope. He does. Does he? Yes, he does look like a pope. I understand. Wow. Uh, that kind of leads me into the to the next thing that we'll talk about bef- before we go to a break. And that's simply, you know, when you think of Santa Claus, it's g- he's generally depicted in pictures as a portly, joyous, white bearded man, sometimes wearing spectacles and a red coat with a white collar and cuffs, usually a black leather belt and boots carrying a bag full of gifts. Okay, uh, but but okay, and, and and normally this leads us into the next story that I'm sure our listening audience, if if they haven't fallen asleep by now, well, understands no thanks to you what I'm talking about. <laughs> and there's a uh, there was a controversy this past week about whether Santa Claus, as, as a historical figure, is a white man or whether Santa is some other color, such as African American. Why, do you, why can't he be Asian? Well, he could be Asian, Richard. Why well, he no could be Hispanic, and, and, and that's right. right. Or he could be Hispanic. And, and uh, look, we know that Santa's a, a, a mythical figure. He's well, wait, he is? wait, sorry, Hold Freddie on. Jr. Cover your ears. Right. Okay, <laughs> but but here's the, the reality. So what happened? Those of you that that uh, watch Fox News, and I am unashamed to say that I do. And their 9 o'clock host is the beautiful Megan Kelly. Oh, that's the girl you have a crush on. I do have a crush on her. <laughs> Honey, know. if you're listening. Uh, Cover you know. your ears. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> now, Megan Kelly, she's incredibly bright. And yes, she's she's in, a lawyer. Incredibly good looking. And a, she is a lawyer. She's a lawyer. Right. Yeah, I think she's married. She has a couple kids. Three. But we won't Three. hold that against her. I think she does Three have kids, two yeah. kids. So what happened? Megan was doing her 9 o'clock show. And they were discussing. They were discussing. A uh, a blogger's blog, and let me pull this out here. Okay. Yeah, I want to pull it out here. Take your time. Yeah, I will take, take your my time. time. Look, the gist of it is, because I'm not supposed to read this, but there's a blogger named Aisha Harris, and she wrote that as a how as a child she felt confused about how Santa was a, a black man in her house, but whenever she left the house, Santa was a white man. So Megan Kelly said that this is, you know, that it just it's a historical. I don't think she used the word historical fact, but it was something about that that it, it, essentially she said that uh, that uh, Santa is white from a historical aspect of what we grew up with. And just to be politically correct, why can't Santa just be that mythological white figure? So this, you know... It, she ended up apologizing for that eventually, well, right? Well, y- yes and no. No, actually she didn't. And, and the, the truth is, I saw Bill Riley did something the other night where he essentially backed her up. So the point is, is that they use it to say that it was just a cheap ploy to go ahead and attack Fox News and this and that. But we're not going to get there. But here's the part that nobody talks about, which I just find absurd. The same blogger said... So that we can avoid the insecurity and shame that children other than perhaps white children would feel having a white Santa Claus. She thought that we should now adopt the penguin as a cute, cuddly creature. <laughs> so from now on, Santa's out. And, 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 a, and a penguin, and a is, penguin in? is in. And oh, Freddy, how, can, how can a penguin deliver Freddy, gifts? wake up. Put on the penguin picture if you have it. I think Freddie's a little slow on the gun here. Stop <laughs> I think he had, he had too much Freddy. eggnog today. So can you imagine that? So why on earth? Fine. You want to attack Megyn Kelly? I don't care. I think what she said is accurate. But more importantly, why isn't anybody criticizing this incredibly stupid idea of a Christmas penguin? I know. How can a penguin pick up all those gifts and go down the chimney and deliver gifts to kids? Well, if he's not a fat guy, he might slide down the chimney a lot easier. You know, truth be known. But I, am I wrong here? Does anybody want to weigh in? I mean, is it so well, wrong? Well, it's really sad that it's gotten to the point that that's they're doing because he can't be black, white, orange, green. Yeah. In your house, if you're black, make him black. If you're white, make him white. In my, house, Chinese, we make him, in my house, we make him Jewish. <laughs> you make him Jewish. Right. Well, I mean, Sammy, I got a Jewish Santa Claus we right call him there. Sammy, we call him Sammy Santa. Sammy Santa? Right. Well, and I, we, I, give, I, we don't leave them cookies. I know it's your Christmas we, we leave gift's going to be. No, we leave them ruggle No, Richard. What? No, the, the obvious joke is Santa's going to bring you Chinese food for Christmas. That's that's correct, because on Christmas Day, that's the only restaurants that are open. That's correct. Now, now, how come he's always eating Chinese on Christmas? I don't know. Why do you always eat Chinese on Christmas? Because it's the only restaurants that are open on Christmas. 
No, it's there's fr- other restaurants open. Well, know, maybe you know, Freddy, I maybe Denny's, but not too many restaurants are open on Christmas Day. No, I really? think you're right yeah. there, Richard. And just to follow up on that, no? it, and we're going to go to our last break, but there was another story right after that, right after that, where there was a teacher in, uh, in Phoenix, or no, I'm sorry, New Mexico, yeah. who uh, I guess an African-American high school student showed up in, in his New Mexico high school, uh, it's called Cleveland High, and he was dressed as Santa. Now, this moron of a teacher goes, at least according to the quote, that you can't be Santa because Santa was white. How, so, what, what was, it, he was, what this, was he? The, this, the child, what was he? He's African-American. African-American. So he shows up. So the teacher question here, why he was wearing a, a Santa uh, costume, and, and allegedly, and it's true, because I think that they it suspended this idiot. But the bottom line is, so the father here, to add stupidness upon stupidness, goes that uh, that the student, he was embarrassed, and now his son doesn't want anything to do with Christmas. Okay, so again, you have a a stupid teacher, but I love the quote of the father saying, now the student's so embarrassed that he can no longer have anything to do with Christmas. So again, it, it just—I think the world's made of idiots. I, I don't know. know what else to say. Well, what about you? are Not supposed to say Merry you Christmas been on right the air. on cue there, Freddie. No, go right. ahead. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're not supposed to say Merry Christmas on the air. Well, it's offensive. You, you, well, yeah, that's a whole other story. Whether Christmas is under attack or not. Well, then how about we can say Happy Hanukkah? Yeah, we can't well, say can't that. Just say Happy Holiday. Happy Holidays is a can. good idea. I happy Holidays. No promise. I, I'm saying yeah, Merry Christmas to everybody. Anyway, let's go to our last break. It's break time, and then we'll come back and do some more stuff. All right, everybody stay put. Don't go away. We're going to be right back. Please welcome a new sponsor to the show. It's Amp2 TV, the first and only internet network that's truly plugged in. When you're looking for a full-service internet television production company, discover Amp2 TV, a full-service production company that can provide all streaming videos in studio or remotely. They offer web page development, and they use all the latest platforms to help make your business selling points more powerful. They can do remotes and live streaming, as well as tape productions. Let Amp2 TV handle all of your television production needs. Choose from a variety of creative TV and radio packages and see why Amp2 TV works with many major companies, including Comcast, Bravo, and Fox 29, as well as individuals and businesses of all types and sizes. To see samples of their work or to find out more, visit their website at amp2.tv. That's A-M-P, the number 2, dot TV. Or call them at 1-866-224-5422. That's 866-224-5422. Life is so overwhelming right now, isn't it? Emotional and financial challenges too much? More debt than you can possibly handle? Are you facing divorce or another family law problem? Injured and don't know where to turn? There is a source of solid, affordable legal guidance. At Elkins and Friedman, an experienced lawyer will explain options and treat you with respect and dignity. They help people throughout Central and South Florida solve those problems. This is a law firm you can trust, where they actually pick up the phone when you call. They have a 30-year record of positive results and they make legal costs manageable for people from all walks of life make the call 954-372-2630 when you visit you might even meet tiffany the office mascot elkins and friedman take the intimidation and the worry out of getting the legal help you really need call 954-372-2630 and begin to make sense of your life offices in fort lauderdale boynton beach and palm beach gardens non-lawyer spokesperson Are you dreaming about your next home improvement project? Let the experienced Carboneau craftsmen help make your dream home a reality. Call them at 954-984-9393 and let them help you redo the things in your home that make it special. At Carboneau, they specialize in residential door and window design, repairs, and screens. They carry the top brands you know and trust. BHI, Galaxy, Windor, and ES. They'd be happy to create a signature look for your home. Call Carboneau at 954-984-9393 and let them know you heard about them on the Elkins and Friedman Know Nothing Show. And you'll get a special 10% discount just for mentioning their name. 954-984-9393 is the number for Carboneau Home Repair. And the sooner you call them and have the home team at your doorstep, the faster that'll make your dream house a reality. Call today or visit their website at CarboneauHomeRepair.com. That's 954-984-9393. Schedule a free estimate today. 954-984-9393. 
You're listening to the Alan Elkins and Rich Friedman Know Nothing Show with two longtime attorneys who are here to share their experience and knowledge and some fun along the way. The toll-free number, if you want to participate, is 1-800-889-0267. And we're back for our final segment. So... So far, so good tonight. So what do you have left to close out the show tonight? All right, well, I got a couple stories. And, and let me just, in keeping with the Christmas theme, because we said before, do you know where the uh, tradition of uh, the Christmas tree came from? We've talked yes, about I know, Santa. I know, We've I know. About do you? Yes. Go ahead. What okay. Do you, what do you the think Germans you know? in the mid-1800s came up with the idea of a Christmas tree. But then what happened after that is you had the tree, but then the decorations of the tree. You know those things people hang on trees? What do they call those things? You sound like Decorations of the tree. Decorations. What? Oh, Jesus, Richard. What is that, hat on too tight? It is. It's, it All right, I, listen. I, you I was, were, when I was younger, my head was smaller. Listen, Richard is, is partly right. He's off by a couple hundred years. Germany is credited with starting the Christmas tree tradition as we know it. In the, uh, in the 16th century is when it started, Rich. 16th century when devout Christians bought decorated trees into their homes. Some built Christmas trees out of wood, pyramids of wood, and decorated them with evergreens and candles if wood was scarce. It's a widely held belief that Martin Luther, the 16th century Protestant reformer, first added lighted candles to a tree. Oh, that's great. Lighted candles lighted to a candles tree to that catch on fire. Yeah. You know what we decorate at home? What we decorate our tree with? Hey. Matzo balls. <laughs> it was great. All right, the tree was beautiful, and you had something to eat. Stop. So you couldn't go wrong. All right, listen to this. You're making fun of a, a, a sacred uh, thing here. Here, it says, walking sacred. toward his home one winter evening, composing a sermon, he was awed by the brilliance of stars twinkling amid the evergreens, and to recapture the scene for his family, he erected a tree in the main room and wired its branches with uh, lighted candles. As you correctly say, and then the next day the house burned down. <laughs> yeah, his family was destitute and uh, slept uh, in the uh, pouring rain in, in winter, never to be heard no. of again. I just added that part, Richard. Okay. But it says most 19th century Americans found Christmas trees an oddity. It says the first record of one being on display was in the 1830s by German settlers in Pennsylvania. It says, although trees had been a tradition in many German homes earlier, the Pennsylvania German settlers had community trees as early as 1747. So enough of that, but but now you know the origin of the Christmas tree. I thought it started at Rockefeller Center, but hey, what do I know? That's true. Uh, Okay, I got a couple things. Now, I'm going to ask you guys. I, I want to, I think, probably get to the Duck Dynasty uh, story, oh. although it's a, f- a few days old. That's one A few choice. days old? Those ducks are already roasted yeah, by now. The ducks are roasted. Yeah, their goose is cooked. Uh, another story I have, maybe we'll save for next week. Tell me, feet-numbing spray will allow women to wear uncomfortable high heels. Any interest in you, that? That's a great story. Save that for next week. But feet, can you imagine? I wish I invented that. Feet-numbing spray. I know. Right, so, it's more true. women would wear high heel shoes because they wouldn't have any pain. Yeah, it's yeah a the amputation will come about when the blood doesn't <laughs> circulate. It's a real story, but I'll, <laughs> I'll save it for next week. Okay, thank you. Then I, I had another touching story, which says that there was a topless snapshot a photo of a mother and her daughter, which has led to charges. Apparently, a woman was soaking in the hot tub with her daughter, and another daughter snapped a photograph. Hey, of course, what happened to the photograph went all around the school. Uh, oh, did, does this have anything to do with Christmas? No, no, of course not. It's just, it's <laughs> a I was looking for the story. Christmas part. On packaging. All right. all right, I'll put that story away for next week. All right, let's, uh, and I already have my animal of next week picked out, which I won't uh, tell you. No, don't you. tell, surprise everybody. Yeah, maybe I'll give you a tease. It's What's about that? the zebra and where the zebra stripes come from. That's a tease? It's a little tease. Now we know it's a zebra. Okay, I also had an article Hot dining trends in 2013. What's in and what's out? And I thought this was a particularly interesting, but since it's not the end of the year. You know what? I was coming up with a concept. Uh, tipless restaurants where you don't have to leave a tip. Yeah, I knew you'd like that I mean, concept. I think that's a great concept. Yeah, you, you and, and Come on in. Build it into the price. Freddie, am I going to get yeah, a Yeah, but guy? people won't know the difference. Actually, not the one. Well, listen, Richard. What? You don't have to bribe that you're a bad tipper. Okay. <laughs> why, why would you think that? Uh, How much do you tip? What percentage? 12%. Now, he's All the joking. time? I know he's joking. No, sometimes I tip less. 
<laughs> Why do you do that to yourself? All right. Listen. They're going to spit uh, in my food anyway. What's the difference? All right. Listen, he's not. I make sure that, that we tip 20% when we go out. He doesn't know it, but that's But good. I'm still not sure. Do you tip 20% before right. the tax? Listen, do you want to hear about the this? Tax, before, before the, the tax. tax. Do you want to hear about okay. this Duck Dynasty guy or yes. not? Should we talk uh, about we have How to. many do we but, have left? Yeah, three minutes. Three All minutes. Right, well, talk he, about one duck. That's every, it. Every, everybody knows the story that A&E, uh, and what does A&E stand for? The A&E Network. Art and Entertainment, Art and Entertainment, that's right. You got okay. it right. Anyway, that entertainment, by far the but biggest But you know who owns show. part of A&E? No, and I don't care. Who? Disney. Okay. You know that the Duck Dynasty draws 14 million viewers. Which that's is... a few more viewers than we draw. Oh, well, that's right, Richard. That's Maybe right. we Just need a... some ducks. Just no, a few I'm more. I'm getting ducks all over here. Well, I got a feeling Duck Dynasty is going to be off the air. So if anybody's listening to A&E, you can hire us for a fraction right. of what you are paying. Right, those... right. Any of your executives ducks. at A&E, we're, we're open for bid. So make us an offer. And so let me tell you, we'll every, everybody knows that, that the uh, head of Duck Dynasty is a guy named Phil Robertson. Yeah, you got his picture I know, up that there, guy Fred. quacks me up, you know? He quacks you up. two minutes. Well, you know what happened? He did an interview in Esquire magazine, That's and this guy like, made yeah. comments that he shouldn't have made. But now we have to decide, was it, you know, you can hate the guy, but was his First Amendment right to, to make it? It's what... What he thinks, or you know, he's being driven off the air because so many people protest. He not only made homophobic comments, but, but, but also you know what I think. American. I what? think the whole thing is a publicity stunt because look it's, how many more people no, are talking not. about it. Yeah, yeah, but he's gonna be off the air. You're a hundred. Nah, he won't be wrong. off the air. You'll watch. In, in fact, in I a don't. A few need... weeks, he'll forget about it. He'll be back. Listen, do you know what his quote was? I don't even know if I should do this. I've been no, such a good boy. No, don't even say it. Don't even do it. Don't even read you the quote. We have clear No, don't read the quote. No, you want to be off the air? I don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it. No, 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 no. Duck Dynasty quote. Everybody knows it. Why a woman has more to offer a man than another man. You don't want to hear it. All right. Jeez. All right. Unbelievable. Anyway, so it's a First Amendment issue. All right, wise guy. You don't want me to talk about it. So now. No, I just don't want you to use the quote. Hey, but come it, on, you know, we want our contract renewed. All right, well, anyways, a lot of criticism from uh, from gay rights and others. And and I'm stricken by the fact that the truth is, and I'm, I'm sure that many of the uh, gay right groups, this is the last show that they would probably ever watch. Exactly. They, I don't even watch it. Right, I, I don't. Have you ever I never heard of it. You never heard of it? I never heard of it. Seriously? I don't even know what the quote is. What do you have, your head up your... Uh, no, no, that doesn't interest me. You've never me. heard of it, Dr. June, I want to laugh. Dynasty. I want to laugh on Friday. They sell millions and millions what of merchandise. What day are they on? What day are they on? Well, I don't have a. Clue. You see, he doesn't even know. Yeah, no. I, I don't know when they're on. I'm sure they're on multiple times because they. So you're not even a fan. Right. All right, listen. The last thing I'm going to leave you with tonight. Everybody should have What's, a good Christmas. Thirty seconds. We're we going to thirty be, seconds. We're okay, going to be so. back with our with our equally good after Christmas show next week. Oh, it's going to even be better. But this was a very good Christmas and, show. And, I really and did I mention it. Rich? And I'm going to try to go to France over Christmas. If I'm stranded, you'll be doing this uh, party. He's taking all of us week. with him. Wow. So I think we're out that, there. Is the music? You want to say good night, Richard? Uh, I want to say good night. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Love New Year. Of course, we'll see you before New Year, but. Uh, happy holidays for everybody. Don't drink too much eggnog, and don't drive while you're drinking. Good night, everybody. You've been listening to the Elkins and Friedman Know Nothing Show, where maybe you learned a little something in spite of them. To reach Alan Elkins or Rich Friedman at their offices, call 954-772-6014 or 561-738-5988. Out of area, call toll-free 1-800-922-1277 or go online to elkinsandfriedman.com. Friedman is spelled with two E's. Be back here next week for more from Elkins and Friedman and their Know Nothing Show.